The story I want to tell you is a personal story, though it didn't happen to me. It's a family story that I grew up listening to, and I'm happy to share it with other people. My father was a career soldier, joining the British Army in 1916, stayed in it till 1948. But in 1937, he and my mother, my two brothers and my sister, travelled to the northwest frontier of India. Nowadays, of course, it's the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. And they were there for two full years, and I grew up listening to stories about snakes and mongoose, and very exotic, I thought. But this is my favourite story of the time they had to make the long and dangerous journey home. They boarded ship in Mumbai, or Bombay as it was then, and they were on the Indian Ocean in September 1939. Of course, that's when the Second World War broke out. So they're like sitting ducks in big white trip ships with women and children and munitions. So the ships pulled into Mombasa in East Africa, in Kenya, to have camouflage paint put on them. My mother told stories about picnics on the beach and small boys bringing them fresh coconuts. It was as if the war wasn't happening. Meanwhile, the men were camouflaging the ship's battleship grey. While they were on the shore, my mother realised that my brother Keith was too small for the life jackets that they provided for children. He was only two and a half. And her friend had a little baby only six months old. So my mother used her 1925 Singer sewing machine, which I possess, and made two life jackets for these children out of cork and nappies, old terry nappies in those days. When they went back on the ships, our family went on a ship called the Britannia, the other family on the Yorkshire. And the ships sailed up through the Suez Canal, out through the Mediterranean, past Gibraltar, past Spain. And when they were off the coast of Spain, my brother Bill was playing on deck when he saw a torpedo shoot through the water and bang, hit the Yorkshire, which exploded and sank very quickly. Our family were standing on the deck at their battle stations, mother holding the three children by the hand, saying, if ever I get a roof over my head, I'll never, ever leave it. But please let us get home safely. Of course, I'm here, so you know they got home safely. And when they got back, they heard the story of many people who drowned when the ship went down, including her friend. She was very sad. But in those days, there was only one place to see the news. That was the Pathé News. And on the screen in front of her, she saw a man carrying in the wee baby alive in the life jacket that she made for it. Now, I grew up loving that story. In years past, my mother turned 90 years old and there was a big night about World War II. And I decided to bring her. And she started asking questions. It was obvious she was the oldest person there. And the BBC were there. And they said, could we come and interview her? Oh, yes, she thought that would be great. So the man from the BBC came, put up the interview, still online. And we got an email a few weeks later that said, from a Mrs. Olive James, she said, I was that baby. My mother was drowned when the ship went down. I was rescued and brought to Bordeaux. And I was able to tell that story to my mother two weeks before she died. So it's really important that we bring these stories full circle. We ask the questions, we tell the stories, and we share the stories. So that's my story. I call it My Mother Sewed.